Hi there Edge owners, today in your 2019 Ford Edge, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Kurt's Class 3 2 inch trailer hitch receiver. And this is what our hitch looks like when it's installed. The cross tube is going to be visible, but it's tucked up pretty nicely underneath the vehicle. So unless you're right up on it, you really don't notice it when you're walking up on the vehicle. You really only notice the receiver sticking out the back here. It's a Class 3 2 inch by 2 inch receiver, so it's going to be great for all of your towing needs. Whether you're wanting to put a bike rack in it, and load up four bikes to go with you on vacation, or if you're wanting to get some work done and you want to bring a trailer along with you and haul some stuff. It uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. One doesn't come included with the hitch, but we have plenty available here at eTrailer.com. On bottom we have plate style safety chain loops that has a moderate size opening that should work with most of your smaller and medium sized safety chains, but some of the larger ones may give you a little bit of clearance problems. We do have quick links available here at eTrailer.com which can help adapt your smaller safety chain loops to a larger one to make attaching those chains easier. Our hitch here features a 600 pound tongue weight which is the force going down on top of the receiver. And again that's going to be more than enough for a four bike platform rack fully loaded up or our largest cargo carrier that we have available here at eTrailer.com loaded up to its maximum. It also features a 4,000 pound gross towing capacity, which is how much that it can pull behind it. So if you wanted to take a pop-up camper with you, or maybe you've got a boat and you want to bring that to the lake, you should have no problem doing so with this hitch. And as always, I recommend that you verify your vehicle's owner's manual and ensure you don't exceed any of its towing capacities. Now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the center of our hitch pin hole to the edge of our rear bumper, it measures about six inches. And this is important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contact in the bumper. And from the ground to the top and side edge of our receiver tube, it measures about 13 inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop, a rise, or a raise shank on any of your accessories. And this one's getting pretty close, so you may want to consider a raise shank on your accessories. We'll begin our installation underneath the vehicle here at the back by removing both the undershield panels from each side. Both of these panels are going to be identical. We're going to take out two small bolts on the outside at the bottom of our fascia with a five and a half millimeter socket. And then we'll go to the inside where our frame is here and we've got two nuts we'll need to take off with a 10 millimeter socket. We can now go ahead and pull our cover down and set it aside. We're then going to take off the panel located on the other side. Again, it's got the same hardware to remove. We need to lower down our exhaust, so we're going to put a strap in place underneath to just ensure that it can't lower down too far and cause any damage to it. With our strap in place, we can lower it down by removing our exhaust hangers located on each side of the muffler. A little bit of spray lubricant on the bushing will help make it easier to get these to pry off. We'll then just take our pry bar and just pry it off of there. We'll do the same thing over on the other side. Now that we've got our exhaust out of the way, we can begin feeding our hardware into place. We can now take the coiled wires that come in our kit. We're gonna feed it in the bottom holes on our hitch towards the rear. I'm gonna start with the one that's slightly more towards the front first, and then we're going to poke that coil in and feed it back towards the rear. There's an opening at the back that will allow it to slide out the side of the bumper. Sometimes it's easier to reach your hand down inside the bumper beam to grab the coiled end and bring it out. On our coiled end, now we're going to take one of the spacers that come in our kit, slide it over the coiled end, and then thread a bolt onto the coiled end. We can then take these and we're going to feed them back into the hole. Then we can just pull our fish wire until our bolt drops down through the bottom of our frame. We're going to repeat that same process now for the rearmost hole on this side and then bolt the holes in the same position over on the other side. Now that we've got all of our hardware fed into the bottom of the frame, we have one bolt on each side we need to place in the rearmost hole on the side. 
And we're going to fish wire this in just like we did with the bottom ones. We're going to use the exact same hardware that we did down below as well. So we're just going to thread that on there just like we did before. Once you've got the bolt pulled out the side like this, just go ahead and drop the bolt right back in because the bolt's gonna be in the way while we're sliding our hitch up. We can then pull it through once we get it slid in place. We'll do the same thing over on the other side. Now with the next set of hands, we're gonna lift our hitch to position. It's easier to get the passenger side fed up over the exhaust first, and then we can get the driver's side fed into place. Once we got it over our exhaust, we'll take the fish wire that we ran from outside the side of the frame, through the side piece on our hitch, and then we can lift it up, being careful not to push our lower hardware up into the frame. Once you've got it lifted up, if your bolt's passed through, we can take the fish wire and pull it, and once you've got it pulled out, the hitch will rest on the bolt, and that'll make it easier to install the rest of your hardware. We'll then take the flange nuts that come included with our kit and thread it onto our bolts. And we will just pull off the coiled wires that we had on there and thread on flange nuts on our side bolts as well. We can then go back and tighten down our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket. And then we can torque our hardware with the specifications found in our instructions. With our hitch all torqued down, we can put our exhaust back into place. Gone ahead and sprayed it with some spray lube again. Just bend it out of the way, line up the hanger with the hole, and then just push it right in. So then we're just gonna trim out this section using the diagram found in our instructions. Gone ahead and marked it out, and we're just gonna use some snips to cut it. We are gonna be losing one of the attachment points, but our hitch is just in the way, so it's gonna have to go. Now that we've got this side cut out, we're going to repeat the exact same process with our other underbody panel on the other side to trim that one out. To remove any markings if you made on it, a little bit of alcohol works really well. With our panels trimmed out, we can go ahead and put them back into position. Only one of the inside attachment points is used now. So the other nut that you've got you can thread it onto the stud, but there's really nothing to attach it to, or you could just toss it in your drunk jar. Once you've got this panel installed on this side, you'll install the other side the same way. Now that we've got everything in place, don't forget to remove the strap that we had holding our exhaust up. And that completes our installation of Kurt's Class 3 2-inch trailer hitch receiver on our 2019 Ford Edge.